Hey guys, and welcome to Should You Buy It, where all we do is talk a little bit about the game and whether or not we think it's worth the cost. In this episode, we'll be playing Loop Hero, the tactical deck building indie game where your goal is to restore the world through remembering all that has been removed from it. So the first question that we always cover in these videos is what stage of development is the game in? And in this case, Loop Hero is in full release and available on PC for $15. So what exactly is the game? Well, in Loop Hero, your sole goal is to restore the world that has been lost to darkness. In order to accomplish this task, you must fight your way through endless amounts of enemies in order to gather resources and eventually fight your way through the final boss of each chapter. Before we can even begin to talk about the mechanics about the game, we need to talk about the plot as it has a huge impact on how the game plays. Without too many spoilers here, you basically wake up in an endless black abyss. You begin to remember things in order to play the game, which can take the form of cards in your hand, equipment, and your base camp. The cards in your hand can be obtained through fighting different enemies, and the enemies you encounter will be decided by the cards you play. In order to get the ball rolling, however, the game will spawn in some slimes at the very start that will be your first targets. Once you place the cards you have obtained from them, they will change how your map looks and your encounters in various ways. To give some examples here, you will be able to spawn rocks which are built away from the main path and increase your maximum HP. Or you could build a spider's nest, which will spawn a spider every so often on the path next to it. The best part about this whole experience though is definitely going to be the cards, so let's talk about those a little more. Each card seems to have some hidden interactive content related to it. To give you some examples here, the meadow card will turn into a blooming meadow whenever it is placed next to an object that is not also a meadow. Just to give you one more, when you place 9 rocks or mountain tiles in a 3x3 grid, it will transform into a giant mountain that gives you even more HP than the cards individually would have. The cards you will receive each game are decided by which ones you choose in the deck builder menu before you start each run. In order to unlock more, you will have to upgrade your camp with the various resources you acquired throughout each playthrough, and the resources you get are decided by what you interact with on your journey. If you were to say, put a graveyard card onto the path, then every time your hero walks through it, he will obtain one additional piece of stone that he can take back with him and upgrade his camp. The biggest fear though is of course going to be death, as if you die, you will only be able to take 30% of your gathered resources back to camp, which will slow down your progression. Since we're talking about death, let's talk about the combat in Loop Hero. Its combat is essentially automated for you, and there is little, if any, direct way that you can interact with it. The only thing it seems you are currently able to do is equip new things during said combat. This means once you start a combat, there is no way to escape whatsoever until it is finished. Once you do complete that combat, however, you can quickly pause the game and choose to run away. This means your current playthrough will end and you will be sent back to your camp with 60% of your resources gathered, instead of the 30% if you were to die. However, there are still two more options that you have instead of running or dying, and that is either to defeat the final boss of the chapter you are on, which will grant you additional rewards, or to return home from the camp tile on your board. If you do choose to return home from the camp tile, you will get to keep everything you have gathered up until that point, and will only miss out on the rewards you would have obtained through defeating the final boss or continuing that playthrough. Finally, as far as progression goes, you basically just have your main camp. This is a side area where you can spend all of those precious resources you have gathered in order to build and upgrade new buildings. You can build all sorts of things, like a farm which will increase the amount of food you will get each run and allow you to unlock the field tile. There are all sorts of different things you can build, but most of them boil down to either unlocking a new class, unlocking new cards, or giving you some sort of buff for future runs. There's one exception to this rule though, and that is the Supply Depot. The Supply Depot is a building that will unlock a new mechanic for you. It unlocks the ability to craft items. This is one of the first big power jumps you will encounter in the game and will therefore quickly increase your power. You will be able to craft items which can be socketed, sorted like a gem or a rune in MMOs that will give you a passive buff for future playthroughs. Just to give you an example here, the Loaf of Bread item will give you a permanent plus 10 HP anytime thereafter, and you can have multiple of these equipped at any given time. So now let's move into the pros and cons section for the video. First up for the pros is that the game has plenty of progression and things to unlock or upgrade. Everything from new classes to new cards and passive items are all things that can be and will need to be upgraded throughout your playthrough. 
Next up is that the game gives you the ability to choose the resources you want to gather based on what cards you choose to take in with you for each round. For an example here, you can take in the Grove Tile, which will guarantee that you get a piece of wood each time you pass it. And finally, Loop Hero is just a well-polished game that advertises itself as a roguelike and executes on that extremely well. There are really no bugs that we ran into other than maybe one small grammatical error that was fixed within a day. Now for the cons. First up for the cons is that the game just felt really grindy. I mean, after you beat that first boss, I think I had to play six to eight hours just to be able to even have a chance at taking down the second one. We're not saying grind is necessarily bad, it's just that the grind in this game feels kind of meaningless and like you're not really getting much out of it. Almost as if it was a chore rather than a reward. Lastly is that we wish the game had a faster speed than 2x. I mean, don't get me wrong, the game is fun and enjoyable, but sometimes it feels like you're just sitting there watching the hero do the job and you're not really able to do much. So adding maybe a 4x or faster speed that is an option for players, I think would really, really help speed up both the grind and would make it more enjoyable as you'd be able to interact and constantly be doing things with the game. So now it's time for the rating for the game. And when we rate games, we wanna get one hour of enjoyment out of every $1 that we spend on the game. So for this game in particular, in Loop Hero, we would want to get roughly 15 hours of enjoyment out of the $15 that we both spent. And after putting 24 played hours into this game, we give it 8 out of 10 potatoes. Yeah, Loop Hero was a solid game, and we really enjoyed playing it. To be honest though, it did feel a bit like a mobile game or a game you might have open in the side window at work. It is a well-polished roguelike, but unfortunately it does not innovate too much on the genre and plays it safe with most of its mechanics. So if you are looking for a good roguelike game that is purely a roguelike, then Loop Hero is definitely worth the cost. Now, if you guys want more money-saving content, consider subscribing to our channel, where we release new videos every single week, where we spend the money so you don't have to. Make sure you guys smash that like button, and as always, thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.